And joining us uh, to speak on the aftermath of the election is uh, Far Farai Muvuti. He is a senior analyst with the Southern African Times. Thank you very much for joining us, Farai. Thank you so much for having me. So, Excuse of course, the elections have come and gone. A, a winner has been declared and a lot of you know, eyes are on Zambia. Do, can we really now say that the votes of the people in Zambia has counted? Because, you know, in Africa, we're always picking holes in our election process. Well, uh, thank you yet again for having me. I think Zambia continues to uh, strengthen its democratic processes. Uh, this is uh, not for the first time that uh, there's been a smooth transfer of power. This has happened uh, continuously over uh, the uh, the existence of the, the, the country post-colonization. They have continued to always demonstrate a sense of um, dexterity in as far as it concerns uh, uh, the, their, their democratic institutions. Uh, what we have seen largely is a peaceful election that of course had its uh, initial hiccups uh, with political violence uh, in the country and uh, towards in the, during the process uh, towards the elections, uh, where the military was then deployed and security measures had been taken uh, to, uh, put put into place to ensure that uh, the uh, the stability of the country was preserved. And uh, after that, the uh, electoral uh, commission, uh, the Zambian electoral commission, announced it, the, the winner of the election. And we've since seen a meeting. Uh, between the former head of state, uh, who is President Lungu, the outgoing rather head of state, and the present, uh, the, the nominated, uh, the elected rather, uh, head of state, H.H., uh, as they affectionately call him, Ichilima, or who is of course now going to be the president of uh, Zambia. And they had a meeting discussing that particular process in the presence of uh, the AU um, uh, 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 electoral observers as well as the Commonwealth. So it's equally a demonstration that uh, that uh, Zamb well, Zambia's democratic process is much alive and thriving. Mm. Now, I mean, Africans have watched several elections happen in 2020. I remember what uh, the Ugandan election um, where, you know, we saw Bobby Wine uh, running. He was harassed. Um, what lessons do you think that African countries that may not be as... Um, small as Zambia, especially countries like Nigeria and Ghana, can learn from what is happening. Uh, the smooth democratic handover of power uh, in Zambia. What can we learn from it? And even countries who have had maybe some something close to or even better uh, than Zambia. What's the lesson to learn? Well, I think the lessons are not limited to just Africa. I think the, the, the lessons are, are, as we've seen with the U.S. election recently, I think the lessons are for the world to, to, to observe, that uh, there is, there is a, a magnanimity in, in defeat, as is the case with victory. Uh, uh, Zambia has stood as an example of uh, the strength of young institutions that are still blossoming. It's equally an example uh, of, uh, of uh, unity, uh, as a country that equally had its own challenges in as far as the uh, political const constatations. But those uh, contestations did not become their plight in, in, in a, in a, within the context of a, a bad outcome. What we did see is people being able to rise above it and leadership, uh, uh, a, a fortitude of, uh, or rather leaders demonstrating fortitude, equally able to discuss even after having uh, a very uh, a, a constrained relations during the electoral process. I think, if anything, the lessons that we can take away is that uh, they, uh, we, Africa and the world can continue to strengthen democratic ethoses through ensuring that the processes and the institutions thereof are respected and remain independent. Now, let's talk about the fact that the economy in the country has been a major concern. And now the president-elect obviously has his job cut out for him. Uh, what do you think that um, Hakinde Hichilema has or will be doing differently, judging from his precedents? Well, I think uh, he, has a, he, he has quite a journey. Um, uh, but part of his electoral premises, of course, were to ensure that he strengthens uh, the economy by firstly dealing with the issues of debt. So his first point of call uh, would be having discussions with the IMF and all the and, and all Zambian Zambian international lenders, uh, be it the Paris uh, 
Paris uh, uh, club, uh, as well as the, the, the Chinese, and having a discussion around how they can restructure that debt, that will be the first point of call. That will then, I suppose, determine the kind of policies that he will he will be putting in place. I'd like to put a, a bold prediction here that uh, he might go towards the austerity way, uh, which I think, um, it, depending on how it is done, may, or may be harmful or equally helpful. But it's really down to the uh, way he will go. But from just looking at his background as a guy who is a corporate finance guy with, and, uh, uh, and a guy who's, who's, who's been in the private business for quite a long time and looking at his external alliances, but more so looking uh, predominantly at his policies, I think we, we will be seeing a more leaning towards a neoliberal uh, 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 sort of a disposition in as far as his policy orientation will be concerned. Now, we're yet to see if this is going to be uh, helpful to the country. I think uh, Africa in, in particular, in as far as neoliberalism is concerned, has seen a lot of challenges. So it would be quite interesting to see how he navigates the, the fundamental arguments that Zambia is meant to have alone. Which are which pertain to the ownership structures of the of the uh, biggest supplier of foreign currency, which tends to be the mining sector, and to see how he will revamp that. If there will be any ownership discussions in that regard, if he will move towards equally diversifying the economy, so he does have quite a lot to 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 work on. But judging by his policies, I think his entry point, of course, will be discussing to markets, reassuring the markets that they will not be defaulting on their debts, and trying to ensure that it's restructured and then moving forward accordingly. But I think the type of deals that he will strike with uh, institutions such as the IMF and the international funders will determine the kind of policies in terms of monetary policy he will go in. Well, Farai Mavuti is a senior analyst with the Southern African Times. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Great. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.